Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Walton with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to take another look at Mark Walton, and this is his sophomore tape. So I just want to make sure you understand that his junior tape will likely show a lot more progression with certain concepts. In his previous, in a previous Boiler Room, I looked at him on a gap play where he didn't follow the tenets of a gap plays blocking scheme, and he ended up getting fewer yards than what he probably would have gotten if he followed the pulling guard. This is a zone play, and we're going to watch Mark Walton on the zone play get about four yards on the play on first and ten, which is by no means not a bad gain at all. What you see with it is that he's got enough quickness to get downhill and that he can run and lean through a wrap by a defensive back. But when you're examining run plays, you really want to start with the center guard combination. What are they doing? What is the design of the blocking scheme? And what you're seeing here is it's a double team with the center working up to the, the linebacker. You have the tight end sealing the edge. So what you, you should be looking for as a running back as you're working downhill in a zone scheme is, which is where's the opening that you're going to choose? Are you going to Ram it in the side. Are you going to bounce it outside? Or are you going to cut back to the backside? And on this play, you're reading that information as you go towards the exchange point. As he begins that, his eyes should be downhill. And what he's seeing is that he's got you know, two hats on a hat and one peeling off up to the middle on the linebacker. He's got a good seal to the outside. He's getting There's some penetration coming off the left tackle, working possibly to the inside here. And he makes the correct decision to bounce it outside. Where I think he can be better at this and more refined, and this is very common for even for star running backs in the college level, is to take another one to two steps closer to the line. He veers immediately outside. And because he does that, he ends up dealing with contact at the line of scrimmage by the defensive back coming inside. Yes, he avoids 91, but it limits his gain. And he doesn't really get the best effect of the bounce outside because he doesn't set it up enough. If he can set it up, shorten his steps a little bit more so that he can have balance to head downhill towards this left tackle. And if he heads towards this left tackle, just another step or two. See that step here? The defender's going to be here. He'd be about where my arrow's pointing here of my cursor. That means that he'd likely get grabbed by 91 reaching for him in the shoulder. But if he reduces that shoulder enough and he's making a quick, decisive move, he's going to have, he's going to be where my cursor is. He's going to run right by that reach. It's not going to slow him down. And he's going to have more width between himself and number 27 to beat 27's wrap or at least have the defender reach for him rather than hit him in the side and be able to drive him to the ground. And if he does that, because he's got a little bit more of an inside angle, guess what else? He might also be able to set up a dip inside this tight end because he would be where my arrow is. He'd run, maybe run through that second reach and he'd have a nice crease up the middle. It's these little things that make the difference between having a good gain as a college player who may not completely have a refined conceptual display of skill based on what the blocking scheme is doing, and someone who's just basically athletic and has a basic understanding of what the, skill, the scheme's asking him to do, but isn't executing it at the highest level. And I would say that a, a foot more to the inside would have made the difference for him to get through the line of scrimmage and maybe work inside the tight end. A lot of people may argue with me about this, but you know I've been doing this long enough that I can tell you that you see these differences in the NFL game. It may not have worked for him on this play if it happened the way I, I prescribed him to do it, but it will work more often on runs like this in the future 
if you were to look at them in total and he presses the line a little bit more so that he's not worried about bouncing so wide outside so early. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, the RSP Film Room, and my blog at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.